mother's Bible that was given to her when she joined the church way back when in the 30s it would have been early 30s um and we're going to play a little game with this so everybody needs to take your bible out of your pew please it is a game that i play i taught the teenagers in the Stony Creek Church. And this was a game that we played with them frequently. And would you like to join us? You want to join us? Yeah, what do I got to do? Oh, oh. Need a yeah, you need a Bible. That's the first step. Okay. Okay. I'm going to show a Bible verse. When I show this verse, then what I want you to do is find it in your Bible. The person who finds it first, please raise your hand. Okay? Okay? You ready? Boy, I like your enthusiasm. He said it's great. Okay. In the minute I show it, you can start looking for it. Okay? And that's not really fair, is it? Because you're way over. I don't think I can show it where everybody can see it. Try this. You ready? I'll just wave it real quickly. Here we go. Please find Psalm 23.4. Go. Psalm 23.4.
game was called the Sword of the Spirit. And the reason we're playing that today is because we live in difficult times. We're surrounded. We can be bombarded, even in our own home, with all the things that are going on in our world. There seems to be a lot of brokenness and a lot of turmoil in our world. So how do we continue to be strong? How do we continue to walk through life not being consumed by this world? Well, the Bible tells us in Ephesians 6, 14, that I would like to read to you, and it's under the title of the armor of God. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you are, can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers, all kinds of requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am I an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. I want to focus just on the sword of the spirit portion of those verses. When I was in sixth grade, I had the most wonderful Sunday school teacher ever, Mrs. Atkins. I learned so much from her, and she taught from the Bible. We'd open our Bibles, and she would just walk us through the verses, and they really made sense to me because of that. And another thing that she had us do that I continue to do, and in which has carried me through so many difficult times, is in the front of the Bible, she would have us write Bible verses that we could turn to when we feel lost, when we feel weak, when we feel angry, when we feel confused. We put the title of it, the reason why we look up those verses, and the verses. I continue with that, and I have a lot of Bibles. And in this Bible, I noticed that I had written down something for when you're anxious. Um, for fear, I had written down this 23rd Psalm. Something when you're worried about your children. Numbers 14.31 is a special thing to remember. When you're... Put on my glasses and get them. You don't know if I'm right, I try, sorry. I can see clearly now. When you're worried and you need to be resting, many times in the middle of the night, I will pick up and read Psalm 46.10. When you wonder who you are and why in the world you're here on earth, Isaiah 48.17 may help you. And when you're experiencing loneliness, Matthew 28.19. So many times we talk about how the Bible is a GPS. It guides us on our walk. It tells us God's will, what it is we're supposed to be doing. And through difficult times, opening up the Bible can get you through those times. So the sword of the spirit is something that will get us through these times. That is the Bible. And it was interesting, I was in my reflection this week, it led me to this interesting reflection that I felt tied in with what we were doing. It goes, once I asked a parachutist, how did you feel when you 
jump from the airplane with a parachute on your back for the first time? He answered, ha, there was only one thought. It works. It works. Well, what does it mean to go through life with Jesus? I can answer from experience. It works. It works. So, at this time, let us pray. God, thank you for being strong and powerful. On my own, I am weak. But with you, your word tells me I can do all things. Help me to trust in you always and recognize that I need you for everything. And help me remember, Lord, what joy that I may tell other people that yes, it works. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you. today is from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 21. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine for that is debauchery but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be subject to one another out of reverence to Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. know if any of you ever read the book Pollyanna? Well, that was one of my favorite childhood books. It was written by Eleanor Porter in 1913, and she wrote about this little girl by the name of Pollyanna who saw the world in a positive way. Now, Pollyanna's philosophy of life centers on what she called the glad day, an optimistic and positive attitude that she learned from her father, who was a missionary, who basically depended on donations from the Ladies' Aid Society. One day, a box came. They knew the box was coming from the Ladies' Aid Society. Polly could hardly wait for this box to come. And all she wanted, because Pollyanna had very good toys, all she wanted was a doll. And when she opened up the box with all this excitement, the only thing she found that she could play with was a pair of broken crutches. Pollyanna started to cry. Her father promised that if she stopped crying, he would teach her to play a game that would make her happier and feel more happiness than any doll could. He taught her that in every situation, no matter how bad it might seem, you can always find something to be glad about if you looked hard enough. He called it the glad game. For she should be glad that she didn't need to use the crutches. That philosophy carried Pollyanna through one of the most difficult situa situations when she was forced to live with her Aunt Polly after the death of her father. Now, Aunt Polly was a very bitter woman, holding on to every single life's disappointment that she had to face. 
And initially, she only cared for Pollyanna out of a sense of duty. Now, for those who never read the book, I'm going to give you some of the spoiler alerts. I'm really sorry to get from them on reading it. Or watch the movie released in 1960 with Haley Mills. You must know that Pollyanna's way of looking at life not only transferred the small town of Bellingsville, Vermont, but Aunt Polly as well. Pollyanna was a girl with boundless optimism. She saw the difficult times in life. She saw them, she realized them, she didn't hide from them, but she chose to be glad. She chose to be thankful and to look for the good things on a daily basis. Ephesians 5, 15 through 20 is a call for us to remember that very belief. Now to connect this to the concept of the glad game in today's lectionary, we must once again take that onion and peel it back. Now the phrase peeling back the onion actually is a metaphor that describes what takes place during self-discovery. Therefore, I ask each and every one of you to think within yourself as we walk through these verses. First, we must to discover the what, the where, and the why. Paul wrote this letter to the church of Ephesus around 58 AD. This epistle was written while Paul was in jail and awaiting trial. Now, can you imagine trying to play the glad game while you're in jail? That, to me, would be a little difficult. His concern, though, was not for himself, but for the welfare of his fellow believers. And as with him, he spent the time in prison, he spent the time praising God for his salvation and his blessings. In this letter, Paul revealed God's plan for his church. His plan for us. It is that believers be united in purpose. Number two, that we form a body that demonstrates, not talks about, but demonstrates the truth of the gospel in our world. And we need to be equipped and empowered to do spiritual warfare, to confound and overthrow evil. Ephesians 5 stresses that before waging war, we must know how to walk, and that requires us to know where do you stand. Ephesians reveals when we stand strong in Christ, we are chosen, we are adopted, we are accepted, we are forgiven, and we are sealed. Wow, that's all that Jesus did for us. Last week we peeled back a part of the onion that revealed to us the importance of being imitators of Jesus. Asking oneself in every single situation, what would Jesus do? Paul knew what a difficult task because he lived it. He knew how hard it was to walk like Jesus. This week, Paul uses commanding words. And in the Bible that I chose, it uses a very special word for this. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools in wisdom, because the days are evil. Circumspectly is an adverb, meaning that you carefully consider all the circumstances and all the possible consequences. The Greek word for circumspectly is that's sort of like a French accent with a Greek word. 
which suggests approaching your walk through life with less fear, worry, anger, doubt, and stress, and survey all the possible consequences before acting or deciding what to do. So, I'm just going to teach the students the five second rule. I don't know, that might take more than five seconds for me to think that all through. Easier said than done. This requires a lot of thinking, foresight, and many times, what has been your immediate reaction to something that happened or something that was said? Was it fear immediately? Was it anger? Was it worry? Was it confusion? Yet, when we continue to peel that onion, Paul tells us in verse 17, to do all that, we have to understand what the will of the Lord is. I want you to reach inside of you right now and think, what do you do to gain understanding of the word of the Lord? There is another necessary part to walk and stand with Jesus. Just as that car that you drove here, or someone else drove you here, needs fuel during a road trip through life, we cannot walk through life on empty. Paul tells the Ephesians, and he tells us, be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit through worship, prayer, and praise, you're not going to feel empty at all. You will be filled with joyous rivers of living water. And you're not going to want anything else to fill you. With the Holy Spirit and the understanding of God's will, you will be able to walk through the life circumspectly, approaching all of life's circumstances with wisdom and foresight into the consequences of your actions and with less worries, doubts, and fears. Now we are at the core of these verses. Just if you go back in time, Jesus promised his disciples that he will send them a helper. And that promises to us as well. The helper, the Holy Spirit. Just think, how easy would it be to play the glad game when we allow the Holy Spirit to work within us? What did Pollyanna always say? If God took the trouble to tell us 800 times to be glad and rejoice, he wants us to do it. Or, there is something about everything that you can be glad about if you keep hunting long enough to find it. There's another side to this glad game, though, and it's interesting to note that in the book Pollyanna, Pollyanna lost her positive attitude towards life when she fell out of a tree and was told that she may never walk again. She lay in bed, depressed, sad, nobody could make her happy. It was the townspeople, and Aunt Polly, who rallied around her and became the light, helping Pollyanna dig deep to find something to be glad about. Have you ever had a time in your life when everything seemed to be going wrong? You tried cheering up, but things got worse. We know the right answers, but sometimes we just need to, we need others to help us, to remind us. We can't do it alone. We need reminders on where we stand and how we are walking. And those reminders come from God from his word, and also by the people that he will send into your life to help
help you through those tough times. Now, I'm not asking that or telling that we be putting our heads in the sand like a ostrich. We can't hide from the brokenness of the world. We know it's there. We know that there are times we feel grief. We feel sadness. And God respects that because he even tells us that our tears at night will be will become joy in the morning. It might be many mornings down the road, but it will become joy. He doesn't want us to get so caught up in it that we can't do his work. Because the kingdom of God is not yet fully here. About which Paul warns the readers in his letter. Yet, we do see glimpses reality around us. If we focus more on the signs of God in the world and call out what is right in the world, and immediately I thought of what Pastor Bruce tries to get us to do every Sunday. Where was God in your life today or this week? We will be able to walk in the light in the love of Jesus. As Paul tells the Ephesians, we could walk with wisdom. We would be the light of God's grace in this world. To be living with the understanding of the will of God is not only possible, but it is preferable to the values of a broken world. That's where the changes begin. This is how we play the glad game. This is how we give thanks at all times, by living our gratitude each and every day. It is a choice. It's each and every one of these choice that only you can make. Let us pray. We thank you your words today, O oh Lord. May they continue to ponder in our minds, seeking understanding of your will for each and every one of us. And may they fill our hearts with joy and peace as we live our life in the light of a broken world.
will be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn 94 together. Praise God, for whom all blessings and woe. Praise, Praise God, God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, Alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Turn of God, our time in this life is limited, and our days are numbered. Yet you have reminded us that if we are wise and use that time well, you have an eternity waiting for us that is beyond our imagination. Help us on to focus on what we have and what we can share, and how the gifts we offer this day can bless others until we are joined with them and your children give you their thanks and gratitude for the rest of eternity. In Christ we pray. Amen. Wow. Thank you. You are terrible. Wonderful. You know, it's so bad, but it's wonderful. What? We wouldn't have experienced that if we sang. So thank you for blessing us. Darkness for the 